Today, I'm still Ewan McKinnon. Hi guys, I'm here today with Angie, who is 54, yes, right? Yes, 54. And why don't you tell the guys at home a little bit about what it is that you're hoping to achieve with your non-surgical work? Basically, I'd like to look 20 years younger, <laughs> obviously, with um, the help of you, Sarah. <laughs> I will do my best, but this is not a magic wand, but I will try. Um, so, have you done anything before? No. First timer? Yeah, first, first time. time. Gosh, first time for everything. Yes, wow. absolutely. Okay, well, why don't we grab your pictures and then we can go through together what might work for you. Okay. So, one of the things that you mentioned when you came in was about this little bit of fold of a skin. Yeah. Fold of a skin, the whatever hoops. that is. The hoods, yeah, above the upper eyelid. Um, that's It's a bit tricky to treat that, but we did have a conversation about how we could maybe use plasmage there, right. which is the technique where we basically heat the tissue up here to contract it. And uh, that's the one that gives you that little bit of downtime. Okay. And you've also got a tiny little bit there of hollowing. So it's not gonna be me doing your treatment, it's Ewan, but um, I'm gonna have a chat with him about whether or not he maybe wants to just put a little bit of filler right there as well because both of those two things will give you a bit more of a wide awake look okay. a little bit more bright in the eye um there's a bit of a discrepancy as well i've noticed in the eyebrow position yes now nobody's brow positions but no, no, I mean, you know this one on me is like way down here and this one's up there but i think we could maybe make a bit of an improvement by taking that one up and then perhaps dropping that one slightly okay. so that they look a little bit more equal um and we would do that with botox right um and when you came in we also spoke a little bit about the neck that the bit chin, yeah. yes that bit i hate the droopy bit so non-surgically, realistically, it's we can't do too much there, but maybe what we could do is try a little bit of ultrasound, radio frequency skin tightening um, for the neck and the lower face, just to see. Yeah, give it a little bit of a lift. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely not, not magic. And okay. by the time that you come back in, when we do your afters, we won't have had the full benefit of it either because it takes about three to six months for you to see the final result from that. So it's not a quick thing, it takes a bit of time. Um, and we do the filming like, I think it's what, five or six weeks after we've done the actual procedure. So it might not be too spectacular by then, but at least we can do it yeah, for excellent. you. Yeah, um, and we did have a bit of a chat as well about how else we can get some lifting here and maybe i could suggest doing a little bit of temple uh filler or a little bit of filler just directly on the cheekbone as well that might get you a bit of lifting too yeah that'd did be you great. have any ideas no i just want to get rid of what i call my crow's feet but my laughter lines if they could be tightened or lifted i'd be mm -hmm. really pleased with that so when we're talking about these little lines here, you can get an improvement in them by doing a bit of Botox around there and also by popping some filler in the temple and underneath the eye in this area. And the reason why that works is because this big muscle around your eye that gives you the crow's feet, as your bone shrinks away from it, and so does your fat. It doesn't have the fulcrum anymore, so it tightens up. So if you re-expand the soft tissue compartment by adding volume in there, it can often make the lines look a lot smaller and okay. a lot better. That'd be great. I think, let's just have a look at you from the side. I think this area, we can try and put uh, the ultrasound and radio frequency there to tighten it up as much as possible. I don't know how much change we're gonna see but we can definitely try and okay, make an that improvement. Okay, that would be great. I mean, um, realistically, you know, the, the best thing to do for this area is doing something surgical, but, you know, not everybody wants to do surgery or not everybody can do surgery, so we've got to do what we can do. So let's just have a quick look at you smiling here. Now, the fact that your face goes into much more of a V shape when you're smiling basically means that you're quite easy to treat. 
He's doing more fillers. It's a favourable thing. Oh, great. Yeah, which is good. You just mentioned as well, uh, you quite like to do something about the little vertical lines on yes. the upper lip. I see that there's a scar here. Yeah, I um, basically was mugged years ago and then it caused um, a form of a cyst. And then I had it treated at hospital, but they said it's still um, never going to properly go. So I was wondering if you could obviously even that out with there. Yeah, so you could probably do a bit of something on the other side to make it look a bit more symmetrical. If there's scar tissue there, which there is, it can make it a bit harder to get through, like physically get through, but we will definitely do our utmost to do that. That would be great. Do you know what? On this image, it does show really well how hollow you are right there on each side and also in the eyebrow area too. I think that's quite interesting. I definitely think we should have a go with that, you know. I, okay. think, I think it would be really nice. Um, and just give a little bit more youth around the eyes. And will yeah. it open up my eyes more? Well, it's a good question actually, because um, that's the part that's huddled yeah. there. And that's the part that you've got quite a lot of volume loss in. That it's kind of like the opposite of each other oh, so you've right. got too much skin there and then not enough there <laughs> which makes it a bit weird so what we would do is that bit there we would um heat it to make it contract and then that little bit there actually would probably put a little bit of volume in there so that it looked more equal okay because having having um two areas next to each other, one that's full and one that's kind of got not enough volume in it. Yeah. That's what one of the things that makes something look older, makes someone look older. And it's also this distance here, um, when we measure there, in some people that gets bigger as they get older and wider and wider and wider. And it can lead to kind of the skeletal look right. in the upper eyelid. So um, one of the best ways to treat it is to actually put some filler in it. Okay. Sounds weird, I know, but no, no, it does work. would be amazing. It does work. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what Ewan's going to do. How are you? How are you? Ah, hi. Ah, hi. I, I'm Dr. Ewan. Are you? I'm Dr. McKinnon. <laughs> nah, now no way. I'm Dr. Ewan McKinnon. What are you talking about? <laughs> wow, are we still doing this joke? Okay, here's what we did for Angela, and we did quite a lot. So we start with Voluma and I place one mil in each temple. I then move on to the cheeks. Now with cheek filler, I like to start with structural support deep and then work in the fat compartments more superficially. So we did some structural work with Voluma. We did 0 0.5 mils on each side. I then went onto the front portion of the cheek and worked deep again with another mil of product on each side. I then took a break from filler and switched to the ultracell machine. The ultracell machine uses ultrasound energy to contract the tissues at the SMAS layer. Now the SMAS layer is what facelift surgeons will target to lift your face during the surgery. So by heating up that layer with the ultrasound machine, we're able to tighten the face and neck and get a really pleasing result. Now you get about 30% of your initial contraction on the day of treatment and the rest of the 70% happens over the next three months. Moving back to filler now, I use Juvederm Volift 1 mil. I treat the nasolabial folds and a little bit of the upper lip area to help with support and start to treat those barcode lines. Switching to Volift now, I treat her nasolabial folds and a little bit of the upper lip to help with support but also to smooth out the barcode lines. I use 1 mil here. Now for her lip treatment itself, I switch to Juvederm Volbella, which is a nice soft product. I use a cannula to place one mil in the lips and another mil in the perioral region to help smooth the skin. I now switch to Juvederm Voluma and treat the chin crease and the chin point with one mil of product. Swapping now to Juvederm Volux, I treat the pre-jowl and jawline area with one mil on each side and the marionette zone with one mil on each side. Switching to Voluma now, I told you earlier that I like to do deep structuring followed by superficial structuring. So I'm now treating the superficial fat compartments with a mil of Juvederm Voluma on each side. I now switch to Juvederm Volift and I treat the sub cheek area with one mil on each side. Continuing with Volift, I treat the oral commissures with one mil each side and then I move back onto the cheek and place another mil. To complete her filler treatment, 
I do Profilo, two mils on the face, and that's the injectable moisturiser for a glow and skin tightening. We now do Plasmage for the upper eyelid area. If you haven't seen Plasmage before, you will see that there are small burns being placed on the skin. Now it's these little burns that cause the initial contraction. However, you'll get some further skin tightening over the next three months. I do a little bit of Botox in the upper face. And then there was a troublesome skin lesion on the side of the patient's face, which I removed with Plasmage. Okay guys, welcome back. So we have Angie here. It's been six weeks since she had treatment. So thank you for coming back today. How are you feeling? I'm feeling amazing. Good. What's making you feel amazing? The treatment. I feel a lot younger. I feel revitalised. I feel like everything's been lifted, mm. tightened. We did a lot of work on lifting, didn't we? So yes. I'm glad you've noticed the difference. So, yeah, we did a lot. You guys will have just seen in the footage. We did a lot of filler work. We did a bit of toxin. We worked on your upper eyelids and we worked on the neck and the lower face with ultracells. So, a lot to have done in one go. How did you find that? I found it okay. There was no pain, just a lot of swelling, mm. a lot of bruising, but I did take some Arnica and I used a lot of Vaseline for the treatment yeah. to help with the soothing of the soreness. Yeah, so kind of in terms of what you're expecting, was it kind of what you expected for about a week afterwards? Yes, because yeah. you'd explain to me, so yes. Yeah. So after about a week, did you say it was all settled? It was all settled, just a little bit of bruising still, just around the lower neck and right. things like that, and a bit around the lip. But otherwise, it healed really fast. And were you able to cover that? Yes, yes, I used a bit of cover stick. Good, so it didn't stop you doing anything? No, not at all. So if there's anything, what would you say had the biggest impact on you treatment-wise? My eyelids and my neck. Uh, and my lips, everything for me. I'm pleased with everything. <laughs> Good. So the eyelids that we did the plasmage. Yes. Did you get much swelling or downtime with plasmage? I got a lot of swelling with that because I had it done at the top right and underneath. Mm -hmm. But otherwise it went down very quick. Good. Um, so you guys might be aware by now that after having plasmage, you get some scabs. They usually are gone by about day five. Was that yes, what you found? Yes, yeah, day five. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, well, you get initial swelling for a couple of days, but after about five days to a week, things are usually yeah, back pretty to settled. But you do need to look after the area and apply SPF because Cream, this, yeah. because the skin is a bit sensitive for a couple of months after treatment. But yes. to me, looking at you, it's looking well. Thank you. So you mentioned the neck. We did the ultracell on the neck. How did you find the ultrasound treatment? Yeah, no, that was great. It wasn't painful at all. It was soothing. It was quite relaxing, I feel. Yeah. I could feel it tightening when you was doing the treatment. So we have the ultracell system at the clinic at the moment, and the ultracell system is very good uh, because it's not so painful. I've used other systems before which are very painful and I find that the results with Ultracell are, are equally as good but the patients are much more comfortable so I'm glad that you said it wasn't No, it wasn't no painful. Great. Is there anything that you wouldn't do again? No, I would do it all again. <laughs> good. The important question now is you're obviously on our couple's special yes. with David. Has he said anything to you? Yeah, he said, um, you look amazing. He said, it, you can't believe how having all them treatments have made you look from that to that. And he commented on my neck and saying how it's lifted it yeah. and everything. Fantastic. Yeah. And then just to finish, I suppose, have, if you were to say in a nutshell how these treatments have made you feel compared to when you first came in, have you, has it changed at all? Yeah, it's made me feel much more confident. I feel like I can look in the mirror and feel I don't look as old as I do. And um, yeah, I've had lovely compliments from it, having this treatment. Wow, oh, that's fantastic. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm so glad that Angie is happy with her treatment results. I'm thrilled with them as well. If you have any questions, because we did a lot, so there may be some, so ask them in the comments section below and I'll be sure to reply to them as quickly as I possibly can. We release videos every two weeks. Make sure you like and subscribe. And also, thank you again. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye, guys.